What's up guys, welcome to the workshop. As you can see, it's a bit of a mess out here. I've got a few projects going on, but I still thought I'd give you a quick video on how I make some custom personalized flash drives that my clients really love. And that way it really adds that personal touch and it makes them remember you. It keeps you around in their head a lot longer. So I thought I'd go ahead and take you to the workshop and show you how I make them. So as you can see, here's the flash drives themselves. They uh, come in pretty much any color you want. I've got the red mahogany and a brown walnut right here. I'll go ahead and include some links on Amazon, but if you look up just wood flash drive, you'll find all sorts of stuff. And pretty much any kind of actual wood flash drive will work to engrave, provided you have the right engraver. So here's the engraver itself. This one is a WER, as you can see right here. There's a few other brands, such as NEJE, and various Chinese brands that all appear to be the exact same printer with a different label on the front. So it shouldn't matter which one you get, they all appear to work pretty good. It's just that these ones are limited on your power and the size of the object you can fit. As you can see, it's a cage style, so you can only fit up to like a three inch by three inch object in there. And it can only be like an inch and a half tall at most. So you're not gonna get anything huge in there but it will work for just small flash drives and stuff like that. So the first thing you're going to want to do once your laser engraver is installed and working on your computer is go ahead and create your image file for the cut. I prefer to use Photoshop. You have to use a 500 pixel by 500 pixel image and it has to be in straight black and white. No grayscale, just black or white. You know, it's a binary color space you can either burn it or you can't. It can't have shades of gray in there. As you see, I've got a template for 500 pixels. So I like to just use straight text. I don't get too fancy with it. You can get as crazy as your heart desires with this. But for me, I like a nice, you know, stylized text. It looks clean, looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and do, for this example, I'm doing my brother-in-law a flash drive for his wedding. Go ahead and slide that over a bit. There we go, now it's lined up. So as you can see, I just make this really simple and easy. Uh, I don't go too crazy on it. Go ahead and flatten image. Oops. <laughs> All right, now go ahead and flatten image. And then go ahead and export as JPEG. All my settings are good, so as you can see, I've already got a folder set up for all of theirs. I try and keep all my uh, designs organized, and I save them all. So I'll go ahead and name this file, save, and there we have it. As simple as that, I've just created this file to cut on the laser engraver. Alright, so I've skipped over the installation. It's pretty straightforward. All the software is on a little SD card with the laser printer, so... There's plenty of information out there on how to do it. It's not super hard. So as you can see here, I've got the program open. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is go to my settings and make sure my motor step pause is turned up. I think by default it's 60, even though it says 30 here. Uh, that's just typical of your Chinese English. But uh, the default, I think it starts off at 60. I would recommend going no lower than 60. I personally do 90 or 100, 120. And what that does is the slower you have it, the less likely you are that the x-axis and the y-axis get off kilter. And that's why, as you see here on this example they give, this row's got all messed up. So once you finish setting your settings, you save it. Save! Don't need save every time! Okay. <laughs> And so then we'll go ahead and import our photo. And then as you can see, it gives you an option, send image to machine. And so now the machine is loading it up. So from here, you'll want to go ahead and load the flash drive into the machine. You see I'm strapping it underneath the rubber band, so that way the rubber bands will hold it in place. The bottom tray does actually move. The bottom tray is the y-axis, while the laser is on the x-axis. So you've got to make sure you strap it down pretty good. 
and make sure it's nice and level without moving. From here I like to make sure the flash drive is level using the edges of the machine as a guide. That way I don't end up with text that's off kilter from the flash drive. So to focus the laser, I use a small piece of paper on top of the object I'm about to engrave along with the glasses that came with the engraver. And then I rotate the knob on the front of the laser to focus the beam. So ideally what I'm trying to do here is get it to where the dot that I see is as small as possible. Once I've got a focused, now I just want to come into my software here and make sure that my burning time is set accordingly. So as you can see right here, it's set to 34. And it's basically the power level, or how long, I believe it's in milliseconds, how long it stays burning on a certain spot. So the lower you set this, the less intensity you're going to get on it, and the less of a burn. But you want to adjust it for the material burning. For like a lighter wood, you're going to want it higher, like this right here, 34 is what I normally use for a very light wood, an unstained wood. And then for darker woods, such as that mahogany, I'll normally bring it down to about 25. And that tends to give a good clean burn. Because you kind of try and want to get the balance between having enough burn that you've got a sharp edge, but at the same time not overburning to where it tends to burn the areas around it and you get kind of splotchy not as sharp clean edges so you just got to make sure mess around with it and figure out what works for the material you're cutting so we're getting close to done from here there's just one more safety check I want to make sure because obviously you want to make sure this is right before you make the cut it's permanent and that'll cost you money if you mess up so the first thing I'll do here is hit carving preview and what that does is make the laser go around the perimeter of a cut in just basically a square or rectangle pattern to give you an idea of where you're cutting and so you want to get a look at it from several angles make sure it looks lined up make sure it looks good and centered make sure everything looks good and you might want to pause it by going back to middle of image and then making your adjustments moving it around and then doing the carving preview again repeating these steps so you may have to repeat these steps several times just depending on how lucky or how good you are <laughs> but once you get it lined up to where you're nice and confident you can go ahead and come over here and hit start and fire it up and it's gonna burn the image as a quick side note I also tend to keep a USB fan right next to it blowing on it so that way it keeps the smoke cleared out and the smoke doesn't build up and get in the way of the laser I've actually had some cuts that have been messed up because the smoke kind of pooled right there on top of the cut and the laser didn't have as much power because of it so some parts of the cut were sharper than others and it was just a mess so you'll want to be careful with that I would advise getting some kind of little USB fan to go with this laser engraver Alright guys, that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. If you did enjoy it and you want to see more videos like this in the future, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button and share with your friends. Thank you.